Hey there, in my previous video, I showed you how my, how my students, my final year mechanical and mechatronic students, have designed a machine that we can evaluate different uh, tread pattern, rubber tread pattern for my ultra high speed wheel, the wheels that I call the key wheels. You can see the real rear wheel here. It's mostly assembled because I had to take it apart to clean the salt off it. But you can see one piece of rubber is actually still in. And this rubber was cast. It's an industrial grade polyurethane rubber and typically you cast that in a metal mold but those molds are expensive to make you have to cnc machine them out of a big block typically of aluminium and i didn't have the budget for that and i really wasn't sure what these tread patterns should look like so i needed to figure out a way of making my own molds and making my own rubber tread patterns and i came up with an idea because this is designed in CAD, computer-aided design, Autodesk Inventor to be correct, which is also what I happen to teach at the University of Auckland. So I designed this pattern in CAD, and then what I did, I added on to that, you can see the pattern is in here, it is that exact shape. And then I added a little, a little box around it, so it became something that's called a plug. Plug is a positive mold that you use to make another mold. So I 3D printed this on my little cheap desktop top printer. Then I mixed a two component silicone rubber and poured it in here. And what that resulted in was a mold that looked like, like, this, like this, a silicone mold, uh, which can take high temperature in an oven, for example, or it can be used at room temperature, whatever I wanted to. Then with my shop skills, I made a lid, looks like this, goes on top, to make that ensure the back plate of the tread is perfectly flat. And this way I had a very cheap mold compared to having one professionally made. And I can also make many of them in different shapes very quickly with just a few days turnaround or even less than that. So I made all these rubber pieces in these silicone molds uh, myself at the Newmarket campus at the University of Auckland. But now I have the students working on this, improving this tread pattern because while this tread pattern worked okay, I set the new Australian record, it still wasn't as stable sideways as I wish it would have been. So my students are trying to improve this and to do so they need all different kinds of shapes cast in a quick way so they can test them. So I have, well they designed a new pattern for me. This is a different pattern, it's all brown instead of this lipstick shape and sent me the CAD file, I 3D printed this plug and now we'll pour a silicone mold in it I'll make a silicone mold from this piece so later this week we can actually cast some polyurethane pieces that they can test in the testing machine so let's get going and let's make a mold need some safety gear first and then we're gonna use baby powder as mold release and an old makeup brush. And the rest will be really simple from there on. So when you make a two component casting, you have to make sure that you mix the two components really well, but at the same time, you have to try to not get air bubbles into it, which isn't that easy. The part life is the amount of time that you have before this material starts to gel, starts to be, um, start to harden. It says on the package how long this is. It's typically just a few minutes, so you have to be quick when you cast something. So let's pour it into the mold hoping that I had measured out the correct amount. It isn't always a really good thing to scrape up the bottom like I'm doing right now, because at the bottom there may be unmixed resin. If this was a really critical component, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't use that last in the, bin, in the uh, container, I would just let it be. So you can get some of the air bubbles out of it by slapping it on the desk. Makes a noise, but it's okay. You can also pop them. There it is. Now I just have to wait 
and then we will have a mold where I can cast another shape on tread pattern and see if I can go, go even faster. So that's it. Now you know how to make your own silicone mold and you can do the same technique if you want to cast pretty much anything. Uh, candles, and um, candy, just make sure you do a food safe silicone rubber, they sell that as well. And you just 3D print your plug, you pour your silicone, you wait for it to cure and pull it out and then you have a mold whatever shape you want. Pretty amazing and uh, you can really do much more stuff on your own than you typically think you can. This is why I love engineering. I think it's just the coolest thing because I can make pretty much anything I want, including a wheel that eventually will be good for 1000 kilometers per hour. I, I just think it's so much fun. <laughs>